Welcome to Bread and Roses, everyone. Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. In this week's program, we're going to be talking about Oxfam's inequality report, about the grotesque inequality taking place in the world today. We'll also be talking about the labor strike in Iran, as well as the complaint to FIFA about executions taking place in football stadiums. We also talk about um, gender segregation. Uh, disappearance of a number of um, secularists in Pakistan and also we'll show you a clip of a debate between Maryam and a Hezbollah Tahlil Islamist on gender segregation. Our fatwa of the week is from Saudi Arabia about rotten cinemas and concerts and our slice of life is of a Pakistani pop star who intervenes to stop sexual harassment at one of his concerts in Karachi don't go away, you don't want to miss this program. Oxfam has just issued a report where it shows that eight people, eight billionaires in the world today own the same wealth as 3.6 billion people, 50% of the world's population. It is truly grotesque and shameful. Staggering, uh, you know, they, there is uh, no end to this. We know and every year we hear from Oxfam and other organizations that the, why, the gap between the poor and the rich is widening. And this is only eight people. It's not referring to the institutions and the corporations, that the huge amount of wealth has been piled up and chasing the smallest profit margin and there's no end to this. And uh, when you actually question this uh, in different parts of the world, you, people are suppressed. And you, you'll see, for example, in Iran, the unemployment is what, 40, 50? Mm. In some places, 70% of mm. the population under the Islamic regime of Iran it's unemployed and you know and that's just one country yeah I mean 10 million people are living in slums you've got um, you know 40 to 60 percent unemployment in some places 70 percent in others as you said you know there are reports of people sleeping in graves because of the abject poverty in that country and that's something that we're seeing across the globe even in countries that are considered wealthy like for example Britain the United States one in four kids are going to bed hungry at night I mean the pressure on the National Health Service and various social services is on daily news and is discussed uh, daily but the, the, the pressure to actually relieve this and change the situation and policies is not there Brexit is coming to actually continue this mm. and speed up this process. As does of the austerity measures. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and Brexit is one of those sort of coup d'etat of the ruling class against mm. the, oh, the basic minimum that the European Union somehow uh, managed to secure for the European population. And that's, gone, that's under threat. And, uh, and one of the things Oxfam says too is that there really needs to be a change in the economic order. And I think that's just, you know, of course there needs to be a change. Yeah. Clearly there needs to be a change. This is, system is built on inequality and making profit over people's welfare and needs. And this is the result of it. Last year, 62 billionaires had the same wealth as 50% 50 of the population. Today it's eight people. Yes. So what's it going to be tomorrow? But, but the reality is the only change comes from organized people and they need to do this. For example, in Iran, day in, day out, we hear that the working class are fighting. And one of those examples um, is HEPCO workers who have been on a strike uh, for eight, nine days now. And they have, they're have protesting and um, They're protesting the fact that they haven't received their wages for six months. Six months now, wages, can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, we can hardly manage with our wages being paid on time, let alone not being paid for six months. It's, it's, it's outrageous. And it's part and parcel of, you know, business as usual. In Iran, lots of workers don't get paid for, for many, many months. And uh, the video footage that we're going to be showing you shows, you know, how the police stand in front of... Uh, people just trying to feed their families and their children. And there's a brilliant speech yeah. uh, one of their leaders says, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, and hopefully we'll, we'll put that on, on the website for everybody to see on the Bread and Roses 
Facebook and other websites to see and that's a brilliant speech and I think they, uh, people need to organize whether you want to um, oppose Brexit you can't leave it to the you know um, the elements of the ruling class to come together and save you you got to organize in everything got to against, save yourself absolutely yeah. against executions you got to organize against Islamist rules you got to organize well, against it's... poverty you got to organize yeah. Speaking about executions, uh, there's a uh, the World uh, Coalition Against Executions. The vice president of that organization has written a letter to FIFA saying that Iranian football should be boycotted because they are executing people on football stadiums. And the latest one was in September of this year. And of course, clearly, it you know, whilst people love football and we want to support football in every way possible, players shouldn't be playing if there's executions taking place on those fields and people should be supporting any form of pressure to stop public executions especially in stadiums and also i mean this brings us to pakistani secularists i'm sure you've heard the news of uh, we we've heard of five people but there are also reports of nine secularist activists who have been disappeared they have disappeared because they have criticized a military rule in pakistan or the Islamists there and, you know, the, the, the so-called fundamentalists. And again, this is really worrying. The secularists always being attacked, being disappeared, being killed, being imprisoned. And it's important to make sure that they're not missing, that we have to keep highlighting this issue to make sure that they're found, that they're rescued wherever they are, and that we make sure that they remain safe and alive. Fighting for secularism? fighting for freedom of expression, fighting for labour rights, a part and parcel of the human, maintaining the human dignity. In this section of the programme, we want to show you a clip of a debate on gender segregation at universities with a member of Hezbo Tahrir. Uh, and myself on Channel 4 a while back, and it was about gender segregation in universities in Britain. Now, one of the points that uh, I tried to make there, and one of the points that's very clear for those of us who are active in this area, is the fact that the demand for gender segregation is clearly an Islamist demand. It's not a demand of just ordinary people, you know. And I think that's something we need to be really clear about. And, I mean, we hear the news in different parts of the world that constantly the Islamists try to impose the bill on as far as possible, whether it is in, you know, coffee shops, uh, wherever they have power. Forget about whether they have a state power, which they do that in day, out, uh, day in, day out, like Iran and Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Even in Europe, uh, Islamists will try to impose the bill. And I mean, there was a report recently from French, uh, France 24, um, that shows, you know, there are... Um, you know, uh, cafes and clubs that only men are allowed, and this day, day and age, we'll see the, the the creeping segregation that the Islamists are imposing, and that needs to be highlighted and exposed. Let's just show you a clip of this France Twenty Four program on this sort of segregation where women are not allowed to enter, and you can see two women from the Mothers' Big Grade who are trying to break this segregation in in France. Stay with us. There are only men in here, and they're not very welcoming. The bar owner doesn't want to talk. The other customers, meanwhile, are uncomfortable. Hmm? 
Now, it's interesting because if you look at this report, you see the argument that this is our culture and so on and so forth. Well, obviously it's not because here are two women who don't want to be segregated and kept out of cafes. But what's interesting, if you watch this France, uh, France uh, 24 report as well, at the end they speak to a feminist who talks about, you know, the double standards when it comes to discussing gender segregation. There's sexism all over the world. Well, of course there is, but that same feminist will never shout double standards if there's a criticism of the French state's sex sexism, for example. She won't say, well, what about the Islamist sexism and gender segregation? Double standards is always used as a way of avoiding the issue and not supporting women and men who are opposed to gender segregation. And clearly, the gender segregation is an Islamist demand and policy, which is constantly driven through. Watch this uh, news item where Mariam and an Islamist are discussing gender segregation in universities. Stay with us. Discuss this. We're joined by Mariam Namazi from One Law for All, a campaign group for equal rights, which organised the protest outside Universities UK headquarters on Tuesday. And Dr. Nazreen Nawaz from the Islamist group Hizbut Tahrir, who says women's rights are protected through segregation of the sexes. And Hizbut Tahrir is regarded as so extreme by some that the group is banned from some universities. Um, well, let's, let's just start with you, um, Dr. Nawaz. Um, what is this about segregation? Why does anyone need segregating? Well, this is a really an integral concept within the Islamic belief. But my question to you today, after the comments from David Cameron, is that when is... No, I've just asked you a question. Yeah. Well, this is it's an not in the Quran. Part. There's no reference it to it of in the Quran. It, of course it is. And it's something which... Where is it I think in the Quran? Question, Which page? If you look at the issue of the Quran, the issue of the Prophet's life, we see yeah. clear segregation. But uh, you know No, what? no, you the know word what? segregate is not used. There's no separation at all. Well, I've just no, looked you, at you, I mean, I've just you, summed you've, it all up. You've visited the Muslim world, across the Muslim world, and you've seen the segregation of men and women in uh, events, in demonstrations, in schools, in many different areas. Actually, this is mainly in mosques, to be absolutely honest. And mosques, of course yeah. mosques. Upstairs and this and is downstairs. a classic. And you've seen the, the Arab Spring of women of demonstrating with each other, separately from men, being politically active, but being separate. And so therefore, Actually, this is an integral... Actually, most of the Arab Spring has been integrated. I, I, I was in Terry Square. I've never seen a more integrated an point event. Here. You just I think, put I think it to the me. question is, the issue is, is that there has been segregation of events for many years. I was at university 20 years ago. This was never an issue. Over the last two decades, never an issue. Mm. The question is, why is it an issue mm. now? And well, really, well, well, can I, I just pause you there? Because actually for most mainstream Muslims, this simply isn't an issue. The issue for, for, main, for Muslims, non Muslims? No, no, issues? mainstream Muslims really do not what's go around worrying about segregation. John, what's your evidence for that? Well, if you look I just at know these a events, large number and I meet you a look large at these number events, and I've read a lot. No, if you look at these events, many of these events are actually organized by Muslim women. Why are people not asking people like me, dressed like the way that I am, as to whether I see these events as being oppressive. Why not listen to the voices of the okay. mainstream Muslim women who organize these things? Okay, and what well, are you let, gonna let, do, let's bring in a different What are you going to do if you ban these events is you're going to actually silence the voices of Muslim women who organize these events in order to put their views forward? Well, let, let, let's, let's look for, for, for a different perspective on this. First of all, do you accept in any way that Islam teaches segregation? I mean, I think that, as, is, as you've said as well, there are many Muslims who don't think that there is any theological basis for segregation. And I think it's clear when you look at the number of Muslims that mix, uh, many of the Muslims who come to these so-called segregated meetings have actually come via streets and university halls that are mixed and they, they've managed well, to do put, that. Well, let me put something to you. Supposing you do, in fact, have a group of Muslim women who seek to be segregated, Muslim men who seek to be segregated for religious reasons, is it not oppression of their religious rights if you say, sorry, you can't do it? Well, of course, men and women can be segregated in religious settings like a mosque. However, that's not the case in public institutions like universities. I would argue. I mean, there are, uh, for example, if a British, uh, you know, people have a right to their religious beliefs. Let's say that they have an absolute right to their religious beliefs. But manifestation of religion can be and is often restricted when it causes well, harm l l and l also this, when it denies this, women's let's rights just and equality. You. There, there is today, I think, you could probably say there's probably not a British university that doesn't have
have a mosque within walking distance. Sure. Uh, and under those circumstances, if people want a segregated meeting, why don't they go to the mosque to have it? I think the issue is here is that... No, that's a question I've asked you. Because these events are at university. These are university students... No, no, I'm now asking you whether there is any reason for anybody who wants a segregated meeting not to walk along to the mosque and have it. Because many of these events, we want to invite non-Muslims as well to come well, and listen. You can invite them into the mosque. I've been to the many We also have that, but these are university students who are organising the event within Islamic societies mm. in order to accommodate their religious beliefs. I think there's any question to be asked here is not why do people want to arrange these events, but why can the system here not accommodate for simple religious differences? And I, I would actually well, argue with the fact that... that, yeah, I mean, I, that. She's I think, asked a good question. I mean, I think that the reality is that it's not about accommodating everyone's views. You know, uh, there are members of Hezbo Tahrir who think that women should be stoned to death. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, if they have uh, an event at university, then can they have a public stoning as well? I mean, uh, I, I mean I'm stretching the argument, but this is where things lead. The reality is that while people have a right to beliefs, however absurd other people might think I they think are, that's a complete stretch you can't of the argument, manifest, like you say. You can't I think manifest the issue. Well, let, 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 I mean, the let issue. me just say this. There yeah. might have been even, uh, you know, there, are, uh, there were black people who supported racial apartheid in South Africa. Does that make it right? The point is that it is discriminatory. Hmm. And we need to ask you, why should men and women be separated in the first place? Uh, why must they be segregated? Let, let, it's because hear, of hear, the, 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 no. the view let's that... Hear, that Dr. Islam Tahrir, that Islamists have of, of women. Not. Of course it's not. This is not a so-called Islamist <coughs> argument. This is an Islamic argument. This is No, this, the, the issue here is the fact that you have Muslim women who wish to organize events mm. amongst Muslim women. And I think the issue here is the double standards. The reality is you have single-sex schools in this country. You have boys' schools and girls' schools. Is David Cameron going to call for a ban of Eton boys' single-sex school? Uh, that would be my next question well, to him. It's a single-sex school. You, you know have well, men, gentlemen. You have gentlemen. Different issue. These no, are not, not. These, the issue this segregation is, segregation is not in any way dictated by religion. Uh, this, I think that's the actually question. women actually, flourish yeah. better in it is said in, right. in single sex school they, but not because in any way they want to sit separately from boys they often do I mean you're sitting next to me right so we're interacting but in Islam on a general level there's segregation between men and women is it discriminatory yeah is it is it I, discriminatory I so. you see the no, point of course could I make one I last point to both of you these are British universities you live in Britain Britain is not a segregated society why on earth should we institutionalize so I, I, the opportunity for people to segregate on our campuses I think that's very testing tale for the reality of the secular system that's implemented here in Britain that it cannot accommodate basic and religious beliefs which it? is into a why should it well that's, Britain, that's an indictment I think I, on the I, secular system no, in Britain no in indictment fact, on I Islam. think in fact a lot is uh, it, it, there's too much accommodation going on I think we need to stand firm on behalf of equality and people's rights people have a right to their beliefs but citizens we as come long, into no, the public space into a secular we, come into the, we come into the public space as citizens irrespective of our beliefs Mariam. and equality is paramount it, it supersedes. As long as you're not a Muslim. No, it supersedes. Equality is fine as long as you're not a Muslim. We have to end it up. We could go on all night. But Mariam Namazi, thank you very much indeed. Nazreen Nawaz, too. This week's insane fatwa is from Saudi Arabia and it is from the infamous Grand Mufti Sheikh Abdulaziz Al Al Sheikh. He is very famous and familiar on He's his so stupid famous. fatwa. He's got this machine that constantly produces stupid fatwa. It's just, <laughs> he's on daily basis. Now he's and he's so stupid. He needs you know the Sheikh to be said twice and the Al to be said. So it's like Sheikh Abdulaziz Al Al Sheikh. He needs to double everything because it's doubly stupid. He's trying to make it so grand. <laughs> and he's basically come out and said that. Uh, if there are cinemas and concerts in Saudi Arabia, that it will open shameless, immoral, atheistic and rotten films and it will harm society. And he knows that actually when people see things, people debate things, people have music and joy, there won't be rule of the Islamist anymore. And that's why he's a bit... Upset. He's a bit upset. But what's funny is that it is part of the Saudi government's vision 2030, mm. where mm. they want to, uh, you know, start allowing for public concerts and cinemas. Ah, <gasps> shock horror. For in about seven, in 13, 14 years, something is going to happen and this it's guy is be shaking rotten. in his boots. <laughs> uh, rotten. These, no. <laughs> al Al Sheikh, Sheikh Sheikh Al Al. <laughs> Thank you.
The slice of life this week is of Atif Aslam. He is a pop star in Pakistan who stops his concert in order to help a woman who he sees being sexually harassed in the audience. And this is a beautiful moment that everybody's, you know, fighting against sexual harassment. Fighting against sexual harassment that is becoming a major issue, is an international and global issue, and everybody's recognized this is one of those um, issues that everybody is suffering from it across, particularly in, in Islamic ridden society. And one of the things that I think is so beautiful about this video is the fact that anybody can stop this by intervening wherever they can, and for him to stop his concert. It is just brilliant. brilliant. You've got to see this clip. And we'd like to end with this brilliant clip and salute him for his brilliance. And we uh, will look forward to seeing you again at the same time and same place again next week. Until then, bye. Enjoy the show, the show. Need a jolly guy. Take it.